Okay, we've started. But you got like the one overlay for them? <clears throat> no. No. No, 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 no. All right, are we in? Yep. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to those of you early birds who have just tuned in. We're casting another N-Gage uh, game. And uh, this one is a best of one, I believe. I actually just walked in the door from uh, the airport. I was over at the International. And that was unreal. That was quite an experiment. Experiment. I was uh, doing an experiment over there instead of going <laughs> to the International. But, um, just working on some uh, volcanoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Just grade three experiments type of thing. I'm still trying to get my GED. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, my throat's a little sore. I'm kind of tired, but it was all worth it, and I'm excited to uh, get back into some Dota here. I didn't have internet in my hotel, and that kind of sucked. I kind of sucked real bad. But anyway, so we have Engage TV Rush playing here with us. Seems that we always kind of have a stand-in from the staff. I'm not sure if that's like a standard thing. Maybe he's tagging along to keep an eye on things. Or maybe he's just trying to get some league points here. He's in the competition. Who says staff can't play? Not me. That's for sure. Cam, okay, for some reason it's telling me that you're offline. I'm online. Uh, uh -huh. It says Swag Raid here is not loading in. Spectators loaded 404. Four. Uh, and I might be offline. I don't know. Oh, and it looks like we're going to be uh, remaking this lobby real quick here. Dennis, how was your weekend? Oh, no, you went to Florida. Update us. I did. Update I us did on went how to Florida. you. Uh, Florida was nice. Uh, oh. Very warm there in Florida, so there's wow. that. But overall, I think a good experience. I did spend most of my time on right, vacation Korean. watching the international. Whoa, 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 whoa everybody! Welcome. I am now back, listening to myself. To early birds. Oh my goodness! Just tuned in. We're this casting another end game. This is awful. Okay, sorry. That's over. <laughs> do I leave this game, or are we still in this? What do I do, Dennis? I think I think we're leaving. Uh, because you know. Holy moly! So, just expert expert just organization here coming from uh, your two casters. We're on the ball, ready to cast. We're in the lobby. I I'm just gonna join again, I guess. Yeah, just join again and uh, just join the lobby. Hmm. Ah, swag rid crashed. How strange, indeed. Uh, so, have we seen any of these players play before? I don't think we have, as of um, yet. I think, well, top player 88888 was uh, in the stream the other time, and I think he was competing, but not uh, particularly in the one we were casting. I didn't know how I was going to finish that sentence when I started it. I thought uh, you were going to say so... he was, like, not particularly good or something, and I was like, geez, <laughs> that's a little bit harsh. <laughs> No, I don't remember. If, I, I, I don't think we saw him. That's the thing. We didn't see him. So maybe. Am I in the game? Some like, awesome what, stuff what the hell here. is going on? Yeah, you're definitely in. It's I Okay, I'm in, in this like weird ass crash game. I'm not in this game. Oh my goodness. What do you mean you're not I'm, in this I'm game? I'm not in that I, game I, with I you guys. I started loading into a lobby. Yeah, but I was in the old lobby, I guess. I, 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 tell the dude that... uh. Oh, Soli. Oh, Soli, save me. I'm not in that lobby. Anyway. So, I uh, I got a lot of paraphernalia. Some Dota paraphernalia. Uh, at the International. Actually... I definitely saw you in looking... the lobby. You're not loading in right now? I'm not loading in. Actually, everybody can oh. look at my new Swagga Swagga here in my inventory. I have some swagga swagga from the international. Just a buttload of items. Let's see what we have. So these ones were granted for going to the secret shop. So they scanned my badge, gave me some sweet stuff. Hot damn, I got a tail. Oh man, I am balling hard now. Um, 
I'm sorry about this, folks, but we will uh, continue to explore our plethora of new items. All of these granted for visiting the secret shop. Not too exciting, but still. I mean, when I was at the counter, the lady just kind of like scanned it over and over and over. I'm not sure if that's how it was supposed to go down. Um, but that's how it went down. The, uh, oh, I'm offline on Skype, if that's what you meant, Dennis. Yes, you are offline on Skype. I should actually change my thing to please oh. disturb me. And so here we go. Here's the cool stuff. This is where if you went up to the uh, autograph desk, the players would scan themselves in and then uh, scan your badge, and you'd get a signature in your inventory here. So this is Cyborg Matt, and I'm really excited Can't about this. Can't join the one. new lobby. I'm sorry. All right, no problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you for notifying me. I'm just trying to. There we go. We get number one. Because we're the best. No! Oh, no. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Victory <laughs> is had. <laughs> first come, first Oops. serve, folks. Anyway, let's go back to our inventory. So we have Cyborg Matt's autograph here. We have Bulbas. I didn't get too many because it was hard to, like, keep a seat and also, you know, uh, be all up year, in that. We'll be able to get all of them. Of course, that'll of be, course. That'll be the objective next year is to get all of the signatures. Oh man, you got so much sweet stuff. We have, I, I was uh, a little delay in the stream, obviously. So yeah, I'm just yeah, two minute now, delay. But. For those of you uh, watching on the stream, there is a two minute delay. I have uh, Eternal Envy somewhere in there. I had something else. I forget who. Anyway, here we are in the game. DD Dos. I don't know if D is DD Dos part of the whole uh, Engage crew or is he just uh, promoting it. Uh, I'm not sure. Perhaps. Perhaps I, not. I, I always say symbol on backwards. Perhaps just doing a little promotion. I mean, this tournament, of course, hosted by Engage TV. Uh, you sign up there. Uh, this one's hosted on EU servers. So you sign up there and you can win points to advance farther into brackets. 20 people get matched into a 5-on-5 five -five captain's mode randomly. The winners of the two games get rematched and go into a final game. Uh, the final five people that st are standing, you know, they're ancient standing, obviously, receive 50 points uh, towards their ladder. And, of course, as you get higher in the ladder, the competitions are for more and better things. And, you know, having spoken to some of the engaged people in the future, there will be events for items um, and just other more interesting, cool Dota things. So this is just starting out. They are in uh, open beta, I believe, still. So... You know, check right. them out. They're engage.tv. Right. Right. Exactly. And this man, Melk, not the Melk that was casting the international, slightly altered spelling, famous for his Naga play. Actually, no, his Batrider play. So, of course, the respect ban coming from the Radiant. Radiant. Yeah, the Dark Seeker and the Naga. One thing that I really want to say is... Well, yeah, Darkseer and Naga, good bands. I mean, Naga's annoying if you want a team fight. Darkseer's <laughs> annoying. Yeah, well, yeah. Just Naga is annoying, period. Na'Vi learned to ban Naga in the finals last night, and it did him good, man. It did him yeah, good. Yeah, I will say, Puppy's bands were perfect. We're Instead on of point, targeting yeah. Bulldog, they targeted the supports, and they did really well by doing that. Exactly, but that's not this game. This game, we have a Nature's Prophet ban. I kind of, I like it when people ban Nature's Prophet because he's like, they say Wisp is a game changer. Nature's Prophet is a game changer. He's a, he can do anything he wants. He can go mid, he can go off lane, he can go jungle. And then like 20 minutes later, he's pushing one of your towers while you're trying to take a team fight up top. So I don't know, man. I, I, I wish Nature's Prophet would get banned out more because I feel like a lot of the time, like, uh, if you're playing kind of like a long-term game, like if you're picking up a Weaver, for example, um, which mm -hmm. is, this is why it's a good ban, uh, is if you're playing a long-term game, you don't want somebody that's going to start putting pressure on you so early in the game like Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet, he basically, just by being in a lane, he's pressuring you. He's You can't leave him alone in a lane, otherwise he'll just take your towers. Uh, and you can't really delay the game with a Nature's Prophet either because he'll just get farmed and take your towers, right? So, uh, if you're playing the long-term game, I totally 
suggest banning out that nature's prophet. I hate him. I want to kill him, though he is a really cool hero. I uh, I don't like playing against him. Yeah, he is. He's an annoying hero. And the other good thing about him, of course, is his build versatility. Right. So, like, starting from the very beginning, you go into something like a hand of Midas, which will accelerate your levels in your farm. But more importantly, uh, if you have magic dependent heroes, he can build an orchid for his silence. He can build a Hex late game, which a lot of them do. He can build a Desolator for faster pushes. So he's very adaptable within a lineup, uh, which makes him a good pickup early on because you can build the rest of a lineup around him and you still have a lot of options, so to speak. So he doesn't close you in into a playstyle. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like the versatility of Nature's Prophet. I, he's, he's like one of the best picks that you can really pick up uh, in the early stages of the ban pick phase uh because i mean life stealer for example you pick him up and the other team can pick up a bane even though bane's you know life stealer lockdown got nerfed recently uh you know it's just when you pick up your hard carry so early you, they know what's going down basically when you pick up a nature's profit so early they they you could be doing whatever you want like bat rider as well which is why the bat rider gets banned out um there's just so much versatility in nature's profit and i feel like we've been sucking his d for too long now i feel like we need to be moving on to other heroes nick's assassin gets no love nick's assassin my man possibly going up in the middle lane up against a puck not a terrible matchup he's not gonna have the greatest time uh but if he uh if he levels up that spike carapace a little bit then, uh, then he might be able to hang in there, at least for a little while. Get his level You think six. this is a solo mid, Nyx Assassin? I don't know, it could be. Usually it's a support, but I like seeing the Nyx Assassin solo mid because you know what that means? That means big ganks, and that's way more yeah, entertaining. Exactly. Like you, you Yeah, he does need the level advantage in order... Because, you know, if you're just hitting level six when everyone's already level nine, you're not going to go off and solo gank anybody. You're just a stun. Exactly. And that's it. Also, Nyx Assassin is really good against the Puck because the Puck does so much AoE damage that Spike Carapace during a team fight can really mess up the Puck's mobility, which is pretty important. Mm -hmm. So, so far, we've got Weaver, Nyx Assassin. I'd like to see a Broodmother so we could go for the Spider Strat. Um, not sure what else you'd pick up. <laughs> this, the Bug Strat? This is, these are the spiders. Strat, yeah. This is like Beetle and Beetle, I guess. I don't know what the other one. Earwig, maybe? I guess. I don't, I don't even know what an earwig is. I just figure you, You've everything... never seen an earwig? The, the name is, like, so creepy. They have, like, pincers on their nose, basically. And, Jeez. or on their faces. And so, and they're called earwigs. So that seems to, you know, uh, tell you that they're probably going to crawl in your ear and then pinch you in some way and hurt you. Um, which is obviously a terrifying thought. And there were a lot of earwigs in uh, Canada where I lived, so that sucked. Whenever I, whenever I saw one, I'd squish it. It's nasty. Yeah, I actually, I just uh, left for a moment because I swear there was a mosquito the size of my thumb. Like my entire thumb just chilling on my window. And of course, I, I had to kill him. But Outworld Devourer, so this is a support <laughs> Nick's assassin. So, <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, everybody runs Nick's assassin support. He's so good as a support is the thing. He's got so much utility. He's got that spike carapace. He's not going to be focused in a fight, so he's probably going to get hit by AoE uh, mostly, which is where the spike carapace comes into play. Uh, he's got that mana burn. He can keep whoever you're laning against pretty low on mana if you want that. Uh, he's got that stun, obviously. A lot of utility there. And then the, the creme de la creme for Nyx is his vendetta. And this is this is really important actually uh, because they're up against a life stealer as well. Uh, Nyx Assassin basically needs to be using that vendetta to scope out the enemy jungle and find the life stealer while he's farming and make sure that he doesn't get ahead uh, so that, because it, it kind of right now feels like they're banking mostly on the weaver and a weaver, I mean, he can kite a life stealer pretty well but mm -hmm. if he gets caught, he's fucked. <laughs> like, he's, yeah. There's nothing that's gonna save him from a we from a life stealer uh, if he gets caught out and he you know his Lincoln's is down or whatever. Alchemist. Mm -mm -mm. Another one of those picks. Razor. What? Uh -huh. 
On who? So maybe they're not putting the puck. I think they're laning the razor against the OD. I mean, they could lane him against the Alchemist with as much success. One of the things I do like is Weaver relies on a big tanky hero being in the team fight, and he's able to run around the outskirts and do a lot of damage throughout the fight without really putting himself in a lot of danger. And Alchemist does that. Um, so I guess this will be a Weaver off lane, a mid OD, and a farming Alchemist with a Nyx Assassin. Yep. So they really want to pick up a ranged support here. The Razor pick, I think, is really a counter pick to the OD because that puck is going to have an awful time in mid. Right. So perhaps an off lane puck, we have seen it before. He does have a good escape mechanism, but he's not a particularly strong off laner. Uh, and this Razor will likely have to pick up the mech for the team since Rubik doesn't really put priority on those types of items. Uh, and, you know, neither does really Lifesteal or Puck. So maybe they'll have a mech carrier, something like a... Huh, something like a Keeper of the Light might not fit bad into this lineup. Right. So, it'll allow them to play a little more aggressively. The reason that Razor is so good or can stand up against an OD in mid, which most heroes can't, um, usually what you know the saying goes uh, no hero can 1v1 in od in mid or whatever how whoever said that i forget who it was uh I, maybe it was puppy i have no idea i don't really care uh razor doesn't require any mana for that static link and the static link well it requires mana but it's very yeah low. but it's like very 20 low. mana level one yeah it's extremely low so that is going to increase the damage of his right clicks which you need no mana for right clicks, so... OD, watch out, my man. Bane gets picked up. Yeah. Man, I'm surprised that they didn't ban that Bane. <laughs> it's like a very obvious ban up against the Lifestealer. Um, yeah, you said it almost right away that, that the Bane would be picked up. And I mean, it's a smart pickup for them. I like the Lena pickup as well. Uh, you know, with good coordination, I think the Rubik and the Lena could do good work together. One of the reasons the Razor is so good against OD also is the reason OD wins the lane is because, you know, from stealing the mana, it's, it doesn't only lower the amount of mana that the enemy hero has, but it also allows him to last hit because he's stealing intelligence. So he outlast hits you and out denies you in the lane almost always. Of course, if the Razor is able to sap some of that damage back, we've got a slightly different situation. So. We'll see how, we'll be, how they'll be laning this, um, but I think it's going to be pretty standard with a Weaver off lane. Maybe even in the, they could run an aggressive tri lane with the Bane and the Nyx, but I would like to see them run it defensively just so the Nyx Assassin could get some quick levels out of the jungle. And of course, what would a game be without a pause? At the very beginning. Uh, At let's the very introduce beginning. the players time. here. OD Swagrid, the uh, no-show from last game. Healing save, please to me, says Rush. I think he means Salve. Uh, he's kind of giving away the fact that they're pooling, but that's all right. <laughs> because, you know, who cares? Yeah, there we go. So actually, are we going to see like two engage people going up against each other? Yeah, we it are. It seems like, yeah, okay, DGOS anyway. is in fact a it, part of the engage team. And yeah. they will be going up against each right. other. Anyway, top player, 8888, on the OD. Swagrid, actually switching over to that Nyx Assassin. Captain Murphy on the Alchemist. Going into the top lane here, we have DDoS. I always say DDoS. I don't know. When I was a kid, I learned it like that. And, uh, <laughs> and ever since, I've been unable to really think of anything else. Um, Explorer going into the bottom lane here as the life steer, so it looks like they're gonna go aggressive, which is nice. Gonna see some action here. Alchemist in the bottom lane. Bane. Oh, you wanna introduce the uh, the so dire team for us here? Of course. On the dire team, we have Engage TV Rush playing the puck. We've got Explorer playing the life stealer. We have Rabbi yeah, Raki B Otake playing the Lena. Melk praying the razor, oh. and of course, total Ausfall. Total, total Ausfall, Ausfall playing the Rubik, and they it's are like, going to run an aggressive trialing. That's not a bad idea yeah. for them. They're going to be able to contest some of this jungle farm pretty well. Uh, well but either trialing really has good killing potential. So, well, we'll I mean, their off lane, their off lane is Weaver, right? So, I mean, they. Uh, they can't really get a kill up against a Weaver, so the logical choice is, okay, 
what what do we want to do here? Do we want to get our life stealer free farm and let the alchemist free farm, or do we want to try and shut down that alchemist as best we can and get some early game heroes like that have uh, some lockdown like Alina and a Rubik, uh, which is what they did. And so they will try to contest the farm of this alchemist. Always a good idea. Of course, going for that unstable concoction first. And, and the they're supports. going to remove that sentry, actually. It's a very smart idea for them. That sentry was out of range of the bull camp, but even still, they can actually see this observer as well, so there's going to oh, be no ruined vision. The nightmare is the up OGs. on Lena. The stun is getting charged by the alchemist. Here we go. Oh, stay calm, boys. Stay calm. The Nyx assassin tries to stun that Lena, but she's going to run away anyway. The alchemist falling very low. The life stealer. Oh, the nice stun from the Lena. She turns around. She's going to... Try and pursue. The first blood is picked up by the Bane on the Lena there. She, maybe she came back in and uh, was maybe a little... Uh, uh, hubris was her downfall is what I'm trying to say here. She, she came back in. She thought she could make the plays, the big MLG plays, but not everybody can. Not everybody can. You gotta, you gotta be careful there. So she throws her life away, gives away a first blood, trying to get that first blood on the Alchemist. It would have been worth it, honestly, the exchange, but... Teammates not uh, pursuing as quickly. I mean, what happened was essentially she was very low health here. Then she backed up to here. And then came back down and threw the stun on Alchemist here. And then all of her teammates were up here. So there was no follow-up. Uh, so, and then obviously Bane is just right here and comes and kills her. And she's... Yeah. That's a good. I like that. <laughs> it was a nice diagram. Yeah, right? yeah, it was really nice. I'm glad. I'm glad I realized where you were drawing it. Immediately started looking at it. Yeah. I do want to say actually, this life stealer is going to be really good against this alchemist. Like the alchemist, obviously going to be able to farm a little faster. He is going for a, like a fighting alchemist build with no points into Grievel's greed yet. Obviously because he's up against a tri lane, but life stealer's um, feast is going to allow him to steal a lot of life from alchemist because alchemist does become Actually. very high HP very quickly. It wow, in the top lane, actually, the puck break. doesn't jaunt into his orb and just dies. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what was going on there, but he didn't... He threw out the orb, he phase shifts, and then... Oh, wrong keys. I see, I see. Oh, Rush. Oh, Rush. You engage TV crew. You're all so crazy and bad at Dota. <laughs> <laughs> just, just setting kidding. up all the wrong keys. Actually... One thing I do want to look at is the Radiant Courier is a Prismatic Drake. And oh, we here we go. Course. The stun's getting charged this up. The lift from the Rubik. But the stun is going to go off on the Lena. And this Lena is not having a good time. The stun from the Nyx catches two. Now Lifestealer finds himself running away. He rages up. Perhaps a little too late. He already got caught by the stun. So nothing really to rage about. But, you know, he's doing his best here. Trying to, trying to pop off them CDs. The brain sap, that pure damage. Actually, see, Bane is not only good for his fiend's grip on uh, on the life stealer, but he also has that pure damage on the brain sap. Uh, so when he is raged up, the Bane can still just last hit him with a with the brain sap, which does a lot of damage. As far as last hits go, Puck doing quite well here in the top lane. Up against the Weaver, 16-2. In the bottom lane here, actually, Life Stealer. He's going hard. Will he commit, though? Explorer, exploring the Radiant side. Holy moly, he's raged up. I don't even know why. There was no stun. There was nothing. The Nightmare is up on the Rubik. They're going to lock him down for now, at least. The Nyx Assassin with the double damage, and he comes in. Gets that last hit. Ooh, mmm. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Explorer trying to run away. The nice spike carapace locks down that... Oh, the rage! And the one last hit from the Bane. Oh, that was just nice. And the Dragon Slave just barely missed. That, how did that even miss? What the yeah, hell? I'm, I'm not sure how that missed. That looked like it actually hit, but probably just walking right out of the hitbox there. Just and I mean, barely. this lead is doing very well. Definitely, you know, those, those stuns always landing, trying to do as much work as she can in this lane, but... The aggressive trialing not working out the best right now for them. I mean, the life stealer is farming, on you know, on equal grounds as the alchemist. So I guess that's not lost, but you know, so, the alchemist is certainly going to have less trouble in the mid game catching up on farm if he has to. I don't know about this Rubik rotation. I mean, he rotated alone. He's not really farming the jungle. He's just standing there, 
And I don't think he's going to be able to get a kill on the Weaver, man. Like, the Weaver is just too slippery. He's just He's yeah. got time lapse, too. So there's no way that they're going to be able to kill this Weaver. Uh, so this rotation is basically for naught. Uh, the Puck might even die here, actually. The face shift. She's, he's going to try and orb away. Nice time lapse. And he's going to try and find this Ruby. No. Man, why are the sick right clicks? You, you could have... Delivered a few more sick right clicks, DDoS. DDoS, my man. <sighs> Captain Murphy in the bottom lane. He's got 20 last hits. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not not the greatest, but pretty good. Actually, in the top lane, we were getting lifted up here. The right clicks. Yeah, you know, coming out to silence left. up so he won't. Oh, Sakuchi just in time. Oh, the sentry was down and he was just in range. Look at that. He wow. died right here. Just in range of the sentry. Well, it's a good thing that Ruby came by and dropped that sentry then. So, him being here is approved now. No one died in that lane. They got a kill on the Weaver. They're going to slow him down a bit. But I'm actually surprised that the bottom lane hasn't been more aggressive, considering that there's only one support now uh, for the Life Stealer. Right. Yeah, I, it, well, he's back in the lane now. Uh, or, no. Yeah, well, he should be back in the lane. I mean, he's just coming going back to the fountain. If he goes back to the top lane, then he's just wasting his time, really. He should be in the jungle. He should be, you know, trying to do something. Like, even just stacking and pulling his own jungle would be useful for the, mm -hmm. for the life stealer. Um, really anything. Just get some farm, man. Explorer rages up. The stun is getting charged by the alchemist. Will he be able to throw it in time? And he tosses it on the life stealer. Life stealer does fall, but the Lina able to pick up the kill on the alchemist. So, an even trade? And not one that either team really wanted to make. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I like the Bane being in this lane, but I think once the Rubik left, the Bane should have at least rotated into the jungle and started stacking, just because the Alchemist benefits so much from stacked camps. And also, one of the nice things is because the Alchemist can farm so quickly under Chemical Rage, the Nyx Assassin can hang out with him and leech some of the XP, which would be really useful for him. I think it's really important to point out, actually, there's four men, four men. There's a four man gang here on the bottom lane. Bane falling very low. He's open wounds. The orb is gonna make him drop and both heroes are just gonna die here. Yeah, both heroes dead. There's a pretty good gank. It wasn't like perfectly executed either. It was just like, they just kind of sat there and fought four heroes. Um, they could have run, I guess, but it didn't... I don't know. <laughs> Not sure really what went down right there, but they were extended past their Tier 1, and uh, and they didn't run when four heroes popped up on the map. So it actually looks like Outworld going to come here. It's important to mention that the Razor is owning the Outworld in the middle lane. Yeah, his Absolutely farm has really owned. suffered. I mean, he's a hero that depends on having oh. high intelligence, and all he has is a mantle at 8 minutes, so... Oh, hot damn, here we go. The rage is up. The alchemist stuns himself. I don't think they're going to be able to catch it. Yeah, they went the wrong way. They went the wrong way, but they find Alina. This is a kill. Life stealer. you may be dead, or you may be alive, but your buddy, uh, Lena here, she ain't so lucky. Yeah, and this Rubik lane. has located, I uh, rotated, sorry, located. Again, He man. has rotated to the bottom lane again to try to get this weaver, and I mean, hopefully he has a sentry. Weaver. Uh, he does not, Ooh, so he doesn't actually have, have a lot of trouble. If he uses his Shikuchi, here we go. Five seconds until Shikuchi. He might act they might actually be able to get him here. Uh, the puck might die. In fact he will die. Yep, but they Oh, oh! What a face shift! <laughs> that was great! Good that was job, phenomenal. Puck! Rush! My man! So well done. So Holy well done. Holy moly. So the Weaver does actually die, which is really, really good. That's surprising that they were able to pick up that kill. Because uh, maybe maybe the Weaver just a little bit overextended. He was up here. Perhaps, yeah, he was overextended. Well, he didn't expect the Rubik, I think, to make another rotation. Um, and he probably could have solo killed the Puck between what he was doing and time lapse. But I think he got a little greedy at the end, not time lapsing when he was on very low health, uh, and instead trying to get the kill. So Puck able to exploit it, phase shift out of it, and um, worked out really well for them. Worked out really well, but this Razor OD matchup is really holding this OD back, and this is not a good thing for this team. I mean, it's not like their Alchemist got free farm, so he's not going to be contributing for some time. In the bottom lane, oh. actually, there's an initiation of the Laguna Blade! Instantly melts that Alchemist, and now Bane and Nyx 
are just running for their lives. They are sitting ducks here, especially with Alina Stun coming out. And now Spike Carapace. Oh my goodness! 245 gold for that Lena. Puck gonna try and pursue here. I don't know if this is... Oh, well, there you go. I mean, she's she's taking a lot of damage, though. If, if that had taken any longer, she would be dead right now. Yeah, I got really lucky, actually. I think the, uh, the waning rift hit uh, at the very edge of its animation there, so... Working out pretty well all together, and you know, another successful gank on this bottom lane, and things are looking really good for the Dire. I mean, we're 10 minutes in, and they have about a 2,000 gold advantage with no towers pushed whatsoever. And this OD, I mean, OD's not a hero that plays very well from behind. He kind of relies on winning that middle lane very, very handily. Um, and he's still sitting at a, just a, oh no, he's got something coming on the courier. What is it? It's a salve. So he's sitting on... Oh, here we go, in the bottom lane, Explorer rages up, tries to fight his way out of it, but the lifesteal is just not enough to keep him alive up against two heroes, so he will fall. That's that's a mistake that I see a lot of players that aren't really used to lifesteal or uh, make, is that they'll overestimate their lifesteal, mm -hmm. and, and they'll try and man fight someone, and then decide, oops, uh, this was a bad decision, and try and turn around and run, and by that time your rage is down, your open, rune, your open wounds are down, and you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> so, you know, just, you know, play it safe with that lifesteal. Don't don't uh, expect to be full health by the time you hit somebody three times. And actually, Bane, open wounds up. The rage is there. Laguna Blade getting popped left and right here. Picking up some nice kills, some nice farm. And now Alchemist. A bit of a pickle here. Open wounds, not gonna be up for another eight seconds at least. Alchemist is gonna ulti up. Actually, this looks really bad for the Dire. They're just gonna sit in here and probably take way too many tower shots. Yeah, Lina's dead! This is exactly what happened last night with Havost. They tried to dive him under the tower and Alchemist's stun is just too good defensively under a tower. Like, unless you lock him down, you're not- Oh, here we go, another stun. And it's on the Rubik. Rubik, my man, watch out, buddy! One more last hit- Oh, no, it would've been two, but- one more after that one. The wand will make it two again. Oh, he's oh, got the stun! Oh, he's dead! Oh. 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 The alchemist overextended and the bane is there, but the pure damage on the brain sap isn't enough. Enfeeble that man. Enfeeble him in man fight. Enfeeble. Okay, oh. that works, that works. Okay, turn around, enfeeble, and man. No, all right, run for your life. Run for your fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> this does not the look good. is up in two seconds. Oh, God. It's got 400 health, I think she could Laguna Blade him to- Oh no, it's only 450 damage with the resist, it's not enough. But a few more right clicks and this Bane is gonna explode. And so this rotation will be spotted out by the uh, Dire Ward here. Dire with some really good wards. Really, really Yeah, good very wards. aggressive. Really, really showing their position on the map. Of course, Weaver continuing to farm in the top lane and keeping up with CS uh, with the Puck. But well, the Puck really is still far away from a Blink Dagger or any kind of core item that he wants. I guess so is the Weaver, but he's at a thousand gold, so things are looking okay, and he did take that top tower. Hmm. I... Oh, uh-oh, Razor's gonna run into an OD here, and this is a bad spot for this OD. Uh-oh, the, the Puck is phase shifting in top, and here we go. Oh, we have multiple fights, this is going down! Razor, Static Link, nah, nothing. Top lane, Weaver falls to Rubik and Puck again. Man, oh man. Weaver is, should be much slippery. It's much slippier. Slipperier? Slippier? Much Slip more slippery? Much more slippery. I, got, I want one <laughs> word that sums it all up. I don't want to have to say more. I want one word. Much, mm, I want, just gotta have some pizzazz, you know? Oh, Alchemist, actually, oh my god, that Fiend's Grip just in time. And saves his buddy Alchemist, Captain Murphy, thanking his lucky stars. And actually, Puck joins the battle. Waning Rift, not enough to bring down that Bane. Yeah, and very skillfully, actually, face shoots out of the spike. Oh, in the river! God, man, this Rubik is actually, you know, doing some work here. I like it. I, I doubted him at the beginning of the game. I said the rotation was for naught and that he was wasting his time. But look at this guy. He's got two kills, one death, four assists. He's got yeah, he's doing 800 very, gold. very well. And actually, Puck might be in a bad position here. If they... No. He's slippery, too. <sighs> Hot damn. 
Well, I mean, going into this, what do you think the Radiant should be doing? Obviously, they want to secure farm on this Alchemist, and, you know, they keep running into a little bit of trouble, but the exchanges seem to be pretty even. Both, you know, both tri-lanes having very strong attacks. And actually, we have the Nyx Assassin TPing into mid. He does have Vendetta. Interesting if he pops it here, tries to go in on the Razor, because they need to do something to this Razor. Razor, of course, benefiting more from levels than he does from good farm, but... Some good farm on Razor will make him an absolute terror, especially in the late game. And yeah, he has in fact gone for a mech, so he's got the that buffer axe. on him already. Oh, here we go. Nyx actually vendettas under a sentry. And walks right under it. Wow, that is phenomenal play. Having but, that sentry, this is so important no, playing but he, against the Nyx. Oh, dude, one of the creeps attacked him actually, and he didn't notice. Uh oh. One of the creeps attacked him and he didn't notice. So he had. He still. Well, okay, Vendetta's down anyway. Alright, well, <laughs> whatever. That could have been bad, though. One thing that I don't see the Radiant doing or the Dire doing is their supports aren't stacking the camps, aren't pulling at all. Especially when you're yeah. up against uh, an aggressive trial lane. You want to be, like, trying to deny as much experience as you can because they're already going to be starved for experience as is. Um, yeah. So. Absolutely. Bane is just kind of sitting in lane here. Like, right now, look at where he is. He's just kind of standing here in a very dangerous position. He could be in a safer spot, maybe in his jungle over there, you know, stacking some camps, getting some experience, maybe pulling some creeps in the in the pull camp. And, uh, and it actually looks like four heroes versus three. With 13 seconds on the Dire Ward, they spot this OD making the rotation. So that ward paying for itself several times over now. And the stun is being charged. They are going to retreat. The Alchemist he's... may stun Ooh. himself. Okay, so Alchemist not going to be useful here, but Nyx Assassin looking for somebody. He finds two. Oh, here we go. And the initiation is there. Lena. Oh, the nice mech just in time. Keeps that Lena alive. And Lena's actually... Wow, that Lena's going to live. She might just live. Oh, she just barely dies. Just barely. What a turnaround for the Dire. They... <laughs> the, the Radiant go in and try and pick off just Alina. The Nyx Assassin initiates on like four people or something like that. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then essentially just dies immediately. And, uh, and the only one left alive is Weaver, obviously, because he can invis. I don't know, it's just, it feels like it's, they're going for too many kills on the Radiant. I mean, it's worked out for the Rubik, but it hasn't been working out for the Radiant. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, w one of the things that uh, you really have to look at and really, you know, give credit to for the Dire oh, is the Oh no, the sentry is down, the static link is up on the Weaver here, and he doesn't- Oh, the time lapse just in time. He's under that sentry, so they know where he is, but they're not- Oh, here we go, Lena. It's your time to shine, baby. I know you died last fight. Oh, you'll never make it to Dota State. <sighs> Dota State is the new college that I just invented for learning Dota. And actually, in the river here... Oh, they're gonna go on the Lina. She's dead. Instantly. Weaver with the double damage. And, of course, the spike... Uh, sorry, the spike carapace. The vendetta damage coming out, so... That Lina stood no chance. But one of the things is the Radiant are making extremely good rotations. They're gonna try to go on this Razor here. Razor does not have enough mana for a mech or for any other defensive spells, so... Yeah, he's just gonna go down. And another good rotation from the Radiant. Very well done. Yep. Very, very well done. They're staying on the board and they're not letting, you know, not letting the advantage slip away from them. They are 3,000 behind at the moment, so, you know, that, of course, making a small difference, that fight, but they're going to want to secure a few more kills. They're going to want to start using this Nyx Assassin much more aggressively, and in 16 seconds, this Nyx oh. Assassin will have, oh, uh, what a rage, a tier getting one. that tower. And the lift is up on the OD here. He's actually going to die. No, he's just dead. You, you can't get away. I'm sorry. You're just dead. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I I speak the truth. And Explorer here in the top actually going to armlet toggle his way to victory. A uh, little trash talk. Come on, BM, man, BM. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what BM stands for. I know for BO. I, I just learned the other day that it actually stands for bad manners. Oh, okay. BO stands for body odor. Yeah, exactly. So maybe it was body manners. Body manners. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well put. Well, so I mean, they're actually going to ward the mid lane here. I think they want to take this third tower, the dire, and that's going to take away a lot of control, okay. uh, especially since the alchemist likes to retreat into the jungle. So, it might actually in the middle lane here, Bane in a little bit of trouble, and they're just going to take this tier one as well. Nobody's going to defend it. 
Just kind of like a slow grind to victory for the Dire here. Oh, They're already ahead. Charging Alchemist the stun. Initiation. The tower is down, so this is not a fight that they want to take. Laguna Blade, instant dead bane. That was not a good initiation. They shouldn't be taking this fight. They might get a kill out of it, but I... Oh, God. Dust is up on that Weaver. The Puck is actually running for his life, so nice counter initiation here. It, it seems like that OD coming in and imprisoning that Razor is what saved them right there because he wasn't able to static link again on that Alchemist, and then Alchemist was able to bring down a couple of heroes. And actually, a reinitiation by Puck and Lifestealer. And Lifestealer is kicking ass and taking names. The Rage runs out and a perfect stun right at the right time. He actual imprisonment up on that Lifestealer, preventing him from doing any damage during the coil. Puck is going to be chasing under the tower here. No, he won't pursue. Lifestealer is, however. Nope. So we will disengage. Hopefully. Hopefully. What you crazy? I mean, overall, not a bad trade, I think, for the Dire. Uh oh. I was uh -oh. going to spot this. Uh -oh. Weaver, we you're going to die, my man, to a Rubik. This is no good. Kite him. Let's do some. Let's do some crazy uh, fog of war jukes here. Oh, Shikuchi! Oh, the oh, the he ring. kills him. Oh, he might die to the bug. Kill the bug. No, nope, wow. he's not dead. Twenty health. Puck helping out, being a real teammate there, saying, "You know what? I got a bug on me, but yours is more important." Taking <laughs> care of that Rubik, saving his life, and actually, uh, Life Stealer went and greedily tried to farm the Radiant Ancients. It's not like they were even stacked, so. Perhaps a little greedy there and gets picked off by the OD and the Bane. Oh. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I think Bane I actually he was gonna used his freaking... Fiend's Grip in that fight. And I think, oh, right. He got blown up by the Laguna Blade right away. That's going to be a very good target to focus for that Lina. She can pretty much burst him down with her three spells. <clears throat> and that's going to cancel out any effect for that Fiend's Grip. One, so, in my opinion, the weakest links here are the supports. What do you think that they could be doing better? Um... I think the Bane and the Nyx Assassin can roam together. I think between uh, the Nyx Assassin initiation with Vendetta and then, you know, the Bane's even Fiend's Grip, they could take down a lot of even the beefier heroes in this game. You know, the the thing is the Puck relies on an escape mechanism, so if they catch the Puck out, they can bring him down really quickly. The only one they'd really have a problem with is the Lifestealer. And, you know, the Lifestealer isn't all that strong. He's sitting at 1500 HP, so it's a lot. But it's not insurmountable. And if they can catch him out before the rage, oh, no. uh, especially if they get a good sleep off. Ah, uh, go back to get the free. No! <laughs> she just walked right past the rune, the regen rune, and walked away. Oh, that sucks. Perhaps trying to leave it for one of her teammates. No. No, just, just, just <laughs> no, walked right wasn't. past it. <laughs> she was not. Anyway. <laughs> so... What I really think is the big problem, actually, Alina gonna get initiated on, she's gonna try and TP out, the Nightmare is up. Kinda blocks out that stun, but she's dead anyway, no matter what. The mech is there, gonna try and save her, she actually oh. lives! Oh my god, what a reinitiation here! The Weaver BKB is up, he's not able to take on four heroes, though, or three heroes, rather. And there's, there is Chase here, Razor. No. Weaver's gonna turn around and find himself a Rubik. It's just a Rubik, my man, you can take this guy. And so they're gonna go for a tier two. Anyway, as I was saying before, the supports, if you look at their last hits, they all have eight and nine uh, last hits. Eight and nine. Around nine. Yeah. Which is nothing. If you look at their items, they, the, the only items they have is essentially from kills. Actually, Nick's Assassin in a bad spot. The coil is up and he will die. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, no. The Alchemist, my man. Why are you there? No. Now, Weaver actually is able to pick up a kill on the puck there. With the Shikuchi, he had no damage because of the static link from the Razor. So he wouldn't have been able to right-click him. So nice Shikuchi. I guess it was just an escape mechanism as well, though. Um, the supports are poor as hell. I mean, the Rubik has 8 assists and 6 kills. is the only reason that he actually uh, has any money. Mm -hmm. uh, he only has 10 last hits, which is really bad. Uh... I mean, even as a support, you want to be going for last hits, you guys. Like, whenever the carry is out of the lane, you you need to be just trying to get your farm up because your gold does matter as well. It just matters less than the carries. Uh, you need to be buying wards and mech, and sometimes even a mech is more important than, um, you know, if a, if a carry has his whatever the fuck. Uh, not, not, that's not true. 
But, you know, like, I'm talking about, like, if a carry has, you know, magic wand and you have, you know, part of your mech, it's probably a little more worth it for you. But it's not, I'm not saying steal the farm, I'm saying just watch for farm opportunities. Like, if you're... If your carry's gonna miss a last hit, <laughs> you know, go for Help it. Help him out a little, secure it. Just like the kills, you know? <laughs> secure He's that. about to miss a kill, secure the kill. He'll be very grateful. No, but the truth is, supports, and that that's what distinguishes a lot of really good teams and a lot of good support players from bad support players, is you can make so much out of the jungle. You can stack. Um, a lot of the time, you can even help your carry farm if you're a hero that doesn't do particularly well at farming jungle stacks. Your carry can help you farm by hitting down the last creeps pretty quickly and allowing you to take some of the last hits because some support items, especially key oh, yeah. items like a mech, I mean, in this case, He's the Razor the has a mech for the Dire. Mm -hmm. Which is but the Radiant don't have anything. Good. They don't have a mech. Yeah, they're um, poor. And they're not even close, actually. So that's what they the really need here. to be doing is they cool. need to be picking up that mech because that's deciding a lot of these oh. team fights, like that engagement next to the uh, Radiant Ancients. So this does not tell a pretty story here. Look at the net worth. Not only, actually, here we go. The, the lift is up on the OD, and this is possibly a dead OD. He force staffs himself just barely away. He's able to bottle up just a little bit. The Razor giving chase, but will not follow up. The Laguna, the Laguna Blade gets popped. We hear it. He's dusted up. Spike Carapace. They're waiting for it to go down. The open wounds will secure the kill. And this might just be a tier two and Maybe, maybe two tier twos. Another tier two. Yeah. yeah. Throw it in there. They might be able to take two tier twos here, especially if they don't split up and they move his five to the second tier two. They'll be able to take it. Oh, I mean, that next assassin off the map is extremely good. And the life zero actually TPs down. We were able to Steaver. actually kite this life zero pretty well. You can do it, my man. You kill this guy. Do it. He's going to try an armor toggle, oh. but he's not going to be able to. Go, 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 go. You got this. Yeah, man the fight. Here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the armor toggle. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why under the tower? So the Weaver deciding to fight melee style uh, up against a life stealer. Yeah, no. probably not the best idea. Um, also, I think the Weaver didn't use his time lapse there. Oh no, he did. The time lapse was off cooldown. But at least the Shikuchi could have saved him for a little bit of time, especially if he didn't fight under tower. The life stealer is, in fact, I'm not particularly sure what he's building. Uh, he seems to have. I guess he's building a Maelstrom? Yeah, he's building a Maelstrom. Not a bad idea. It's going to raise his attack speed a lot, and it's going to make that Basher so much more effective. One of the things about building both, though, is either the Bash or the Maelstrom procs. Uh, they can't both proc, so, uh, you know, that's going to decrease the number of Bashes. But he'll be able to do a little more damage in teamfights to surrounding heroes, and he can build... I mean, he can upgrade either of those items later into the game. And the Dire here are going to go in immediately for a Roche, knowing that the Weaver is down. The only, you know, potential steal that could happen here is for the Nyx Assassin. And this Nyx Assassin, even though he has Vendetta, I don't think he's anywhere near enough. And actually, you know, there's a sentry in mid, so not even going to be able to steal. But the OD knows. They know that they're Four taking this Four wards up for the Dire. One ward. Oh, two wards up. I actually didn't see this one here. Ah, oh, five wards. Did I count this one? Hot damn. I don't know if I did. I don't think I did. So some nice dewarding coming up from... Uh, the Dire here. It, it seems like the Dire have some decisive control over this game right now. I mean, they only have a 5,000 gold lead, but that's because there's been essentially a Weaver in the offlane free farming this whole time and an Alchemist in the game. So they can get scary eventually, uh, but mm -hmm. right now the Radiant just aren't pushing. They're just not doing anything really. They're kind of sitting back and letting the fight come to them, which is not what you want to be doing, uh, especially with such an aggressive lineup like this. I mean, you have a Nyx Assassin who can be scouting it out and, you know, he could be up here right now looking for looking for uh, a stray Razor possibly here or maybe a, a stray Rubik in the middle lane here. But, you know, even Weaver could easily kill this Rubik here. Not mm, this is an interesting engagement for the Nyx Assassin. I don't know this is a... Ra yeah, this is a Radiant Sentry Ward, so it's not going to reveal him but he can't just walk into four heroes here. That would be really suicidal. But the Alchemist is farming, and that's important. I mean, this um, is this is good that he's doing this, but like he, he came out to come like kind of scout things out because they were all right there, right? And he followed them out and watched them leave, so he knew that they were all like up and gone up wherever. Whoa, weird. Ooh, actually in the top lane here, Weaver pops his BKB just to escape. 
Never really what you want to be doing uh, as a carry, really. I mean, what, how many seconds does he have left on his BKB? That was his eight second BKB. So he's used a few charges now. Yeah, really the top three charges, you know, and at this point the BKB starts decreasing in usefulness and we're only at 30 minutes. One of the things um, that I actually like about this Weaver is the Weaver has chosen not to pick up a Lincoln Sphere. Uh, and that's actually really smart because the only thing that could really pop off a Lincoln Sphere for him would be the Rubik Stun or the Rubik Lift. Everything else wouldn't trigger the Lincoln Sphere. Of course, Open Wounds also, but uh, Static Link, you know, the, the ability that I think Weaver would be most afraid of in a team fight actually goes right through the Lincoln Sphere without popping it off, even though I think technically it's a targeted ability, but uh, it doesn't seem to trigger it at all. So picking up a BKB, a good idea, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, this OD is behind, uh, the Alchemist is, you know, he's at 31 minutes, he's got his plate mail, which is not bad, but it's also oh, not Here we go, fast. the initiation, Life Stealer inside a puck. Weaver just destroyed, melted like warm butter. <sighs> yeah, and there you go. I mean, that's one of the things, right, is we haven't even seen that combo more than once so far. So they're just starting to take this map control away from the Radiant. There we go. Somebody comes There's a double damage, TD. actually, in the bottom take lane, it. yeah. Nobody wants it? Oh my. You can... Anyway. <laughs> yeah, well that's one of the things, right, is if you're a support and all your carries are far away or too far away to take the DD, I mean, after you ping it out and Lina, no one makes a reaction... Nice position to get a gank on this jungle. OD here. Oh, but the OD turns it around, but he has no idea that there are a buttload of Dire hiding just around the corner. And Nyx Assassin is going to make the same mistake. The nice sentry or nice uh, observer ward here, giving them some nice vision. They can see everything that's going on. They see the alchemist. Oh, Nyx Assassin, Spike Carapace going to stun up that puck. Nicely done. He walks into the orb. Oh yeah, let's see some chain nightmare. No, chain it back to the fountain. Oh, whatever. Anyway, Explorer here. Actually, kind of falling really low here. Puck. Stunned up by that Spike Carapace. Alchemist falling very low. He's in the middle of four heroes. Odd place. Armlet toggle to victory. You know how it goes. Uh, what? Yeah, Lifestealer still has the Aegis, so he can actually just get it popped off here. Yeah, very well done by him. Life's I mean, it just looks like, man. very honestly, the Radiant are unable to take a full-blown engagement at this point. Nyx Assassin falls. Weaver falls. And this is going to be GG if this Weaver dies here. This is this is essentially GG. I mean, it, oh, nice! That is not that bad. I mean, you're kind of scaring him off a little bit, you know? Put up a put up a big game. You talk big. Razor falling very low. Milk. My man Milk ends up dying here. Rubik now in a really bad position. This is just total overcommitment. So, yeah, no, but they lose the racks during the same kills. time, so. Yeah, but they could have. Working out all right, actually. They could have taken yeah, no, the racks. they could have just them. taken them. That's true. That's true. They did oh, get a little Oh, nice. But... Oh, nice imprisonment there. Lifestealer actually going to. Nice. He infests a creep and pops out right as the outworld comes up. And this actually leaves Alchemist and Bane very low. The charge is getting stunned up. Or stun is. <laughs> you know what I mean. Captain Murphy. That Shadow Blade doing wonders. And now Lifestealer will fall. Puck being pursued by a buttload of invis heroes <laughs> everybody has invis stun misses second stun will it land ah, oh, face the face ship. ship and blink away here we go run for oh, your life blink. rush run 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 you have to shift that blink you gotta shift command that blink my man okay shift command shift command blink 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 where's the blink oh, oh. go man perhaps so. not abusing the uh <laughs> shift command blink to its fullest potential but you know what the rate i mean the diary did overextend there they did in fact take a rax um and a melee rax at that so that's going to help you know this lane equilibrium be in their favor but it just doesn't look like the radiant can take a fight without waiting for respawns without waiting for anything else and just on top of that the razors picked up his own bkb i do want to say that so far um everybody's doing really well on the dire side but I would give the MVP to Lina. Lina has been landing some fantastic stuns. The Laguna Blades have been on very high priority heroes. She's able to get kills with them. And we saw several ganks onto her and just a little more survivability out of the Lina. Just some good maneuvering, some good stuns has allowed them to turn around team fights. I don't know, man. I would give the MVP support support to Rubik easily. I mean, Lina gets easy kills with that Laguna Blade. That's a, that's a guaranteed kill. 
Rubik, however, has only three less kills than the Lina and has no way to guarantee a kill. Uh, like, he, if he true. gets a good spell, then hell yeah, right? Uh, but it, it, it's, like, this, the lifts that he's been pulling off and the escapes, like, a Weaver will initiate on him in middle lane by his tier one and then he'll, so, or, like, by not his tier one, his tier one is already down and, like, he's all by himself and somehow the Weaver ends up running away from him. And it's like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> so Absolutely. I don't know, man. Well, I give the, the the MVP to him. So we have a ward here that I like to circle a lot because cyclones. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know the, the radiant really looking like they're on the back foot. They do have this observer ward in the jungle that'll be going down pretty soon. They've got one at the entrance to their jungle, and that's going to make the jungle a little safer to farm. But the fact of the matter is, they're staying grouped up as five. They're afraid to move wall. The Dire are farming, the Rangents are farming, the jungle, and we do see a battle plan coming out from the Puck saying, you know, we're going to push that top tower. Drawing an arrow, uh, Cameron now drawing on the map screen, uh, another arrow, <laughs> so we both know what the battle plan is. Cameron's <laughs> battle plan has a few loop-de-loops, perhaps the better battle plan involving some evasion. But Sounds. we'll have to see how it works out. And they're going in for this push. You know, I mean, the Razor could keep farming and get an Agonyms, and that'll make the, their no. push almost impossible no. to deal with. No, no. They can't wait. This is exactly what they need to be doing. They, they're That's up against the, an the Alchemist, Alchemist and a Weaver. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah, and those heroes will only get scarier. Surprisingly enough, the Lifestealer is actually ahead in net worth, but that's essentially because he's got so many kills and assists in the Alchemist. Well, he's got 14 assists, so <laughs> I don't know, man. Seems like uh, seems like maybe his farm is a little bit slow here, uh, compared to the life stealer, at least. I mean, he should easily be ahead of this life stealer right now. He's a flash farming hero, and uh, right, absolutely. Well, he did put the points into Grievel's greed pretty later. later. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, Outworld oh, falls very low. The bugs are coming in, and Alchemist is down. So is Outworld. That infest bringing down everyone, and actually the life stealer falls too. The BKB is up on the Weaver, unable to get away. The Shikuchi not saving him. They do have detection. Nyx not learning the lesson that his teammate just learned. They do have detection, uh, and so <laughs> they will find another kill. A gem up on the Rubik. My man Rubik here. He's 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 being badass today. Total Alisfall. I wonder yeah, what that he's means. forcing out the buybacks. I mean, the Nyx Assassin bought back. Let's check the buyback status here. Oh, man. No one on Look at the Radiant this. side has buyback. Look at this. This is going to be like a tier 4 right here. Yeah, and this Nyx Assassin oh, is man. just most My... like... Oh, no, he's going to make it out. 224 damage stolen. This Razor is hitting for over 350 damage. And if they want, they're you know, with this next Creep Wave, they're going to be able to take down this tier 3 without any problems. Alina actually TPing back. Wait, no, no, why they're are deciding they not... to retreat here. Why aren't, yeah, why? Uh, oh, I mean, they're gonna the go Alchemist is back up. They're not all at full health. The Razor did have a mech, but, you know, that's not so bad. Oh, but the Lifestealer has actually gone in to fight Roche, and this is a great idea coming out of them. They're gonna take the Sages, and they're gonna be able to push in. They're gonna have six lives, and it should go pretty well. I would like to see a buyback out of the Weaver. Weaver able to do that little trick where he buys back and then time lapses back into a fight. Um... But he didn't he we're die really like in his base? <laughs> like, where did he die? Yeah, he died. He died right outside the base. The weaver died right outside the base. But he doesn't have buyback. He's sitting. At, he's only. He needs another thousand gold for buyback, as does the bane. Um, the outworld doesn't have it either. So, they are not in a really good place. And actually, life still are buying back to take this ages. I didn't even realize. Um, but I mean, still, I think a very good trade for the Dire, and the Dire are taking just such control over the game. It's almost at 10,000 net worth, and we're sitting at 68 kills in 39 minutes. A very eventful game, and Lena picking up the Blink Dagger. This is... I think I think the reason that the Life Sealer initially bought back was because they were going to push a Tier 3, but mm -hmm. then they just, like, followed a Nyx into the base, like, to here, and that didn't work out. So. Yeah, just overextend. Well, we saw a little bit of that at the bottom tier 3 as well. And they're going to go for this mid tier 3. That's not a bad idea. I mean, this Razor, yeah, this Razor's starting to build an Agonims, and he's going to have it in about 600 gold. I would honestly say wait. Wait until you have the Agonims, because that Agonims will just destroy the tower. Of course, Agonims uh -huh. on the Razor doing minus armor to buildings. 
my and man. that building would just disappear. Oh man, my man Weaver here. He's got a Desolator, but he's only got 150 last hits at 40 minutes. Yeah, for a free that's... farming Weaver. And that's the, not the that Alchemist. Time. The Alchemist is only has only got 187 at 40 minutes. That's just how shut down these guys have been. So like, when you see a Weaver getting absolutely annihilated by a Life Stealer, you know why? It's because they. Whoa! What just happened? It's because, essentially, the Radiant have had no space to farm, the Nyx Assassin dies, and this is just going to be another Rax and probably the GG, honestly. There's nothing that, that the Radiant can really do. 10,000 gold in favor of the Dire. Alchemist going to do his best here. I don't think it'll be enough. The OD ulti pop coming out here, but his intellect is actually not much higher, or intelligence, rather. Life Stealer, what a badass! That Mjolnir actually securing the kill on the, on the, uh, whoever the hell that and was. And the gem just doing the so such good work here. Yeah, I mean they're in a place now. Yeah, they're just gonna take this tier three. The Weaver gonna try to do some damage. The Enfeeble up. Oh, and the GG is called G -G. coming out from the Nyx Assassin and. Not surprising It's at understandable. All. It, it's well, understandable. Well played by both teams. I honestly feel like the supports needed to get more farmed for both teams, but the reason that I feel like the Dyer had the edge was because that Rubik, he got some early kills. Um, what? Yeah, apparently when you call GG, your team can cancel it. Um, but I don't know. Looks like uh, they'll be drawing this one out a little further. Lame. The Weaver may be holding on. Holding on to his hopes and anyway, dreams. Anyway, so, I mean, the Rubik ended up getting a little bit of farm, which made him do really well. I mean, Lena only needs levels, and then she can get farm by, like, Laguna blading everyone. For a while, she was, like, super poor. She had nine last hits and brown boots and just nothing at all. And then she... DD, check the rune, my man. Uh, well, I guess it's game over anyway. Um, and so, I mean... I don't know. It's... It, the only reason I feel like uh, the uh, the Dyer came out with the edge is because their Rubik got some kills on that Weaver. The Weaver didn't get much space to farm, and uh, and it ended up being that the Rubik just kind of was a better support in the end. The Bane and the uh, Nyx Assassin not really having a huge like impact on the game. I didn't see like the the Bane had that one Fiend script that was really good, and I liked that. It was great. He got that life stealer, and they ended up killing him, I believe. But uh, other than that, I didn't really see much out of the Bane. Maybe he wasn't like the best support to pick. I mean, he's a good counter to the life stealer, but when you're countering somebody, you kind of want to be able to counter multiple heroes with one. Mm -hmm. Like uh, just secure a better advantage. When it's one on one, you rely so much on actually ca catching that life stealer out to be useful. That if the Life Stealer plays well, you've got a useless support on your team. So, uh, DDoS apparently not agreeing with the GG here. I don't know. That's what was said in the all chat. I'm not entirely sure. But we will keep playing. Apparently, Weaver thinks that they can still beat this. I think they can too. They're not out of the game by any means. I mean, yeah, they're not completely out of the game at all. I mean, they are about 12,000 gold behind, about 15,000 experience. But that's not entirely telling. I mean, one extremely good team fight, and they could be in a very good place. And Razor actually. Yeah, could, and they I mean, will sorry. get a good team fight. Here we go. We Big right clicks. Damage. My God, that Desolator doing wonders, and now Rubik falling fast. Razor links him up, but now he's in a really bad spot. This is the turnaround that they've been looking for. The LT is out. The rage is popped though, so it doesn't affect him. That OD not farmed enough. Doesn't have enough intelligence to actually be coming into the middle of these fights and trying to man mode like this Weaver. Holy moly. So this, I honestly think that the Radiant can turn this around. The Alchemist needs to be farming. He's kind of, he's in the base right now, which is all right. He's up to 200 last hits. He's got his AC, you know, he's got his BKB. We're, we're doing all right here. He, he, he needs that Basher pretty soon, I guess. Uh, Lifestealer just destroying. <laughs> yeah, he is just eating through those racks right now. And he's going to be able to anytime now upgrade that Skull Basher to an Abyssal Blade. That's oh, gonna give no. that. Oh, and the hex goes DDoS, out. Oh, my man! Weaver. That weaver is gone. And that's GG.
That's that's game yeah, over. Weaver Captain was their last Murphy hope. Gets eaten through. So D that was their last hope, really. Not none too happy with this Bane, but there was nothing that the Bane could have done. I mean, he he ran into the middle of four heroes as a Weaver. Uh, I feel like honestly, the Weaver has been like melee fighting uh, with that life stealer and with pretty much a lot of heroes, except for when he picked off those two supports. But like almost every fight, he's like <laughs> melee fighting with people, and. Uh, and it's not what a Weaver needs to be doing. He, he started like, if I could move my freaking screen. Well, basically, I, I just feel like the supports weren't on point. They maybe they weren't the best supports, like the Bane pick. I like the Nyx Assassin. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's just one it of went those right, things. To be man. honest. Yeah, I think the Dyer just pushed their advantage very, very well. We saw how much the warding saved them, how aggressive the warding was early on. You know, and those trades, when you're running an aggressive right. tri-lane, trading isn't as bad as when you're running a defensive one. When you're running a defensive one, you want to be not dying is your mission, you know? So if you're running an aggressive tri-lane and you're able to kill some heroes, you're actually doing pretty well. But... The Rubik did well, the Lina did well, the Lifestealer did very well, the Razor ended up picking up that Aghanim, so they brought down those towers like no tomorrow, and of course the Puck played very well, able to get some key silences, even building a Hex at the end, able to Hex that Weaver and really secure the game for them. But that's that, so we'll be going to the finals. Hopefully that other game is wrapping up soon, and we'll jump into the finals and see who's there. Thank you guys for watching, I'm going to drop the stream momentarily. And then uh, we'll be back with some more fiddling with settings for 10 minutes. <laughs> Hope you enjoy.